we're going to do a video rendering test and the reason we're going to do that is just to highlight some of the differences between a couple of different designs, uh, some thermal issues and um, different generations of core mobile CPU, actually core U-series uh, CPU because all of these are basically Ultrabook style builds. On the right we've got the Dell XPS 13, that's running Skylake Core i7, that's a dual core and uh, with eight gigs of RAM. So that's a very recent device. In the middle is the Surface Pro 3, so that's Haswell generation, Core i5, again, dual core. On the left, we've got the HP Spectra X360, and that's running Core i5 of the, sand, of, of the Skylake generation. So the very latest Core i5 on the left. So the two out, out, outside devices are latest generation, the one in the middle is as well. Now you'll know the designs as well. Let me quickly demonstrate the designs for you. X360 is an all-in-one, two-in-one. The Surface Pro 3, you'll probably know it's a tablet with detachable keyboard. And the XPS 13 is a classic laptop with touch screen. So slightly different devices, but the devices on the outside both have the processor and uh, mainboard underneath the keyboard. The Surface Pro 3 has the processor and mainboard behind the screen. So there's a, a slightly thicker sandwich and that has thermal, uh, thermal impact as well. Anyway, let's just start off this test. What we're going to do is take the same uh, working files, the same project. We're using um, Cyberlink Power Director 14. Actually, it's Power Director 13 in the middle, Power Director 14 on the outside. We're going to use Intel Quick, Quick Sync rendering and we render out to an H.264 16 megabits per second file. So we'll just go to the produce screens on each one and we will render out three files and we'll try and start them pretty much at the same time. So test one here and we're going to use uh, the standard H.264 uh, AVC here same here, uh, M264, H264, okay, and then again, test one. And then on the Dell XPS 13, again, we've got that set to H264. And we'll render that out as test one as well. I won't be able to start up the same at the same time. What I'll do is I'll enable the previews as well. It, just, it does slow down the rendering process a little bit, not too much, uh, but it will give you the ability to see the differences and, and if they're all set at the same then it makes sense to, uh, to do that and you'll see the differences. So let's uh, let's start those as quick as we can and uh, the video takes, uh, the, the rendering takes about five, what about six minutes uh, in the best case and ten minutes in the worst case and you can guess which one's going to be the worst. So. I've done this test a number of times and that's the reason I'm doing it here. I've got the Surface Pro 3 and as my personal reference point, I know exactly how long it takes to do this uh, render. I know exactly how much heat is generated on the back and I also know how much noise it generates as well. I've done this test on the Surface Pro 4. I've done this uh, test on mobile laptops as well with quad-core um, quad processors inside. And so I've uh, got a really good feel for just through this five minute or six minute test, how a device is working in terms of thermals, throttling, heat, and noise as well. And it gives me an idea of how good the design is. So you'll see the left and right device is pretty much neck and neck. In fact, the Core i5 slightly ahead of the Core i7 by milliseconds probably. And that was the um, difference between startup times on the two devices. Uh, in the middle, you'll see that old Haswell Core i5 struggling to keep up there. So remember, we've got Intel Quick Sync switched on. That means some of the rendering is done in hardware. So if there are no overlays, uh, in fact, this part of the video you see now, there's no overlays on the screen, there's no filtering going on, there's no resizing. That will all be done fairly quickly, fairly efficiently, efficiently in Intel Quick Sync hardware. When it goes to uh, an image, an overlay, a fade, some titles and text, you start to get uh, activity on the, or more activity moved to the CPU rather than the um, Intel hardware. Um, now then, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the task managers on each one of these and I hope you'll be able to see the actual performance of the processor at the time. So you'll see, well at least I'll, I'll, I'll talk about throttling and I'll talk about the clock speeds and uh, let's just do this one here. I think I can bring it up. There we go. So on the left, uh, it's running at 2.7 gigahertz. That's the Core i5. On the right, it's running at 2.75 gigahertz. That's the Core i7. So there's really not much between the two of uh, these devices. All three are running on battery power. And in fact, I believe none of these three actually gain anything from uh, being connected to the mains power. And in fact, I would advise, if that's the case, don't connect your devices to the mains power. If you can get the most power out of it on the battery, do that because plugging in the mains means you're charging the battery, which means you're dissipating heat, which means you're going to run the risk of hitting the thermal limits quicker when you're charging than when you're not charging. So if you can, leave mains power out. It keeps the device a little bit cooler. It means it will run faster for longer and fast, uh, for long before it starts to throttle down. So on the right and left, still 100% CPU utilization. In the middle, the Surface Pro 3 running at 100% utilization and also clocking up at its maximum 2.5 dual core um, turbo boost figures. What you might see on that Surface Pro 3 in a bit is you might see the actual CPU rate drop down as it starts to throttle back, as it starts to reach thermal limits. And this is one of the main issues with tablet designs. This thick sandwich of components, including backlighting, means it gets warm um, a lot quicker than a device that has a separate mainboard and a separate screen backlighting. And, um, and that is obviously the two outside uh, laptops that we have here. Now I'm just going to go and feel the backs or, or the processing areas of all these devices to give you an idea of how they're heating up. So on the HP Spectra, um, no major heat at all at the moment. There's a little bit in this area as well. I would say we're getting up to 30 plus degrees, nothing at all. On the Dell XPS 13, again, just around this area here where the 7 and 8 key is, the same sort of heat, maybe 30, 35, nothing warm at all. Uh, on the Service Pro 3, and as I touch that, you can see it's gone down to 2.18 gigahertz. Now there's an area just where my finger is, my middle finger here, it's getting really quite warm. Fan noise, we're getting some exhaust from it as well. So this is the noisy, noisiest of the three. Um, I'm going to have to put my ears close to the others to find out if they are actually uh, f uh, speeding up their fans. Yep, so the HP has sped up its fans. The Dell has as well, but it's difficult to tell exactly um, how loud they are because the Surface Pro 3 is the loudest in the middle there. That's gone down to two point, oh, it's just gone down to 1.95 gigahertz clock. So it is probably throttling off now due to heat buildup. This is one of the tests that you need to think about if you're gaming or you're video rendering or you're doing uh, extended sort of CAD work sessions. Um, you need to think about these thermal limits because although that turbo boost sounds like a really nice turbo boost in the shop, once it really gets under load, that turbo boost no longer can no longer function. And uh, you get, uh, well, in the case of the Surface Pro 3 there, we were up at 2.5 gigahertz. In the worst case, it will go down to 1.6 gigahertz. I've also got a test video up um, which shows what happens when you put the Surface Pro 3 in a cool area. Uh, we had a fridge uh, that we were able to put the... Um, Surface Pro 3 in with a, well it was actually a, a beer cooler I think, uh, with a glass front door. And we were, we were able to see the clock go from 1.6 all the way back up to 2.4 within about 30 sec seconds of putting it in. And funnily enough, you can actually put a fan, point a fan to the back of the Surface Pro 3 and uh, get more speed out of it. So that's uh, proof again that uh, thermals are a problem. So the X360 on the left, the, it sounds like a horse race now. X360 on the left, we've got the Dell XPS 13 on the right and they're both leading, they're not throttling. We've got the Surface Pro, I can't carry that one. How can they do that the last uh, 100 yards of a race? 
So the left and the right devices are not throttling at all and look like they're still pretty neck and neck. I'm going to read off the estimated total time for the test and then I might shut up so I can fast forward this video to the end result. So that's finished, 7 minutes 10. This is finished, 7 minutes 15. I just finished there. So very little difference. In fact, the, the Core i5 version actually beat the Core i7 version there. So um, I can't explain why that is. They're both using the same architecture processor, same dual core processor. One should clock a little bit higher than the other. But uh, what's probably happened is there's such a big element of Intel Quick Sync processing inside there that it's not having a major impact on the total rendering speeds. Um, heat test. No, nothing much to talk about in terms of heat. Maybe the XPS 13 a little bit warm in this area here. Certainly the X360 got a bit louder. The X, uh, XPS 13, I know from a standalone test that I, I did uh, before this video, XPS 13 stays really, really quiet. I want to mention the SP4, the Surface Pro 4 at this stage. Uh, when I ran this test against the Surface Pro 3, and there is a video up um, on that, the Surface Pro 4 has much better thermals. It lasts longer, and in fact, during this uh, rendering test, it lasted the whole uh, six minutes or seven minutes, wherever it was, without uh, throttling. But the fans really start to uh, move, and it really gets quite noisy. So the Surface Pro 4, once it gets going is really quite noisy. The advantage, advantage of course is you get all the power out of the uh, turbo boost. So we can obviously see there's a big advantage to having the latest um, having the latest uh, cores, the latest Skylake uh, cores here in a laptop style design. If you're doing video rendering or CAD work or gaming, tablet style designs are really not ideal. And um, it's difficult to tell what, how much of the time delay on the Surface Pro 3 is due to just simple thermal throttling and how much is due to uh, the difference in processing power per clock between the Haswell generation and the Skylake generation CPUs. But my feeling is there, there's quite a lot involved with thermals there. Let's just read the final score, nine minutes 20. So it took an extra two minutes, so um, around 20%, 25% more, more time to to uh, to process on the Surface Pro 3. So if you imagine you're rendering a long long file, an hour long, that's going to save you a lot of time. Right, that is a lot of words over a simple video rendering test, but I hope um, I hope it gave you a little bit of information about how to choose maybe a, 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 an ultra mobile core design if you're doing video rendering and also showing you that there's not much difference in this case between the Core i5 and the Core i7 on the rendering test um, seconds between the two and in fact the Core i5 beat the Core i7 in this test um, uh, I've I repeated this test before this video Core i7 just uh, pipped the post against the uh, Core i5 so Obviously, there may be thermal issues. It might be that uh, something as simple as the device on the left being a, in a cooler part of the room or a warmer part of the room. I don't know. That table, it's sitting on a little bit of metal there. Maybe that's actually acting as a slight, slight heat sink. But uh, at the end of the day, the differences are negligible. Any questions then on the topics of thermals and um, turbo boost and designs uh, for for processing power um, and high power operations like CAD, like video editing and like gaming. Um, drop them in the video below, below and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you got something out of the video and subscribe and you'll get notifications of all videos going up in this channel. Thanks for watching.